reason for the surge of Christian TikTokers is also because God is going to come back soon. I know this may sound like a cliche to you because you may have heard it a lot, but what we call soon is not exactly what God calls soon. Soon can be 50 years from now. It can be 100 years from now. It can be 150 years or more from now. But that's still soon. And that's still going to be soon, even if you don't think it is, because time moves very fast if you actually sit down and you actually think about it. So that's why you see a lot of people doing Christian TikToks. And they seem like they are speaking directly from God sometimes because they have a stronger relationship with God. And that's basically a sign of what will come because before judgment comes, priesthood must come. That's why the scripture says, Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people, called to shoot for the praises of him that called you from darkness unto his light. So basically, you are showing the praises of light unto darkness because light shines in darkness and that light judges the darkness. That's why before judgment comes, priesthood must be established. Before the book of Revelation commenced all the way to Revelation chapter 22, in Revelation chapter 1, it tells you in verse 5 and 6 that you are priests unto the Most High God. We are called to be priests. And when you are a royal priesthood, you live after the order of Melchizedek, who is the priest that is a theophany or Christophany of Jesus Christ. So before you can establish the judgment of God in any situation in your life, you need to know the way of priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is a high priest of God and he's called a king of Salem, which means kings of peace or king of peace rather. And he is eternal. So he's basically God. So he basically gave Abraham bread and wine after he returned from the slaughter of the kings. And then he blessed Abraham and said, you are blessed of the most high God who is the possessor of the heavens and earth. Bread and wine represents the body, which is the word of Jesus Christ, the ways of God and the laws of Christ. And then the wine represents the flavor of God. So you see people nowadays with the flavor of God so much that they are talking about it, living it, and they are enjoying the ways of God because they have stayed long with the ways of God. That's why Proverbs chapter 23 verse 29 says, Who has redness of eyes? Those who tarry long with the wine, those who mingle with mixed wine. So the flavor of God comes with the things of God, the peculiarities of the things of God, that what makes the words of God different, what makes the work of God different than the work of the devil, what basically separates a Christian from the people of the world so that's basically the flavor of god when you see people that are living so much for god that it doesn't make sense they are staying long with the wine those are people that have redness of eyes meaning that they are restless they don't rest until they find a resting place for the god of jacob until they can unload and offload burdens and people are blessed they cannot rest that's basically what david said until i find a resting place until i find a tabernacle for the god of jacob i will not rest i will not give sleep to my eyes so the priesthood aspect of the last days is basically because there will be judgment coming soon. We know the judgment is coming. Like prophets like Micah and prophets like Malachi, they prophesied about these things because they knew it was coming and they wanted people to be more aware. Habakkuk was frustrated because he was asking, why is the wickedness not being judged? And why is God not answering basically what I'm saying? But God told him in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 13 and 14 and 15, I believe, told him that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. But until that happens, until judgment happens, priesthood must be established. That's why this scripture in Psalm 110 basically tells you about different levels of God's move. The whole chapter tells you that basically God will ascend a throne in the person of Jesus Christ. It tells you about the ascension of Jesus Christ. It tells you about the commission of Jesus Christ. And then it tells you about the establishment of Jesus Christ through judgment. So he ascended the throne in Psalm 110 verse 1. It says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. That's God speaking to Jesus, saying, Sit at the majesty until I make your enemies your footstool. And then basically as he's seated he's establishing judgment because we are the weapons of war so he's basically seated to establish judgment through the remnants through the people that are called and those that basically receive the gospel so basically whoever chooses to be for christ that person becomes a remnant so you can choose to fulfill the calling that you have been called to be after the image of christ so basically he's saying in psalm 110 verse 2 he says that the lord shall send forth the rod of thy strength out of zion rule down in the midst of thine enemies so it's not saying god will stand from heaven and send a rod down to earth it's saying in the spirit realm it will be like a rod it will be a rod basically but it's not what you think of when you think of a physical rod he's saying that the rod of his strength will come out of zion whenever it says out of zion it's saying that the people that are dwelling in the the reality of Zion will manifest God's power like a rod of strength. So whoever can access the realities of Zion, they become 
an establishment of the kingdom of God. They become basically a weapon of the kingdom of God and they can manifest the power of God inside and in the world. Basically, they have the power to rule against the enemies of the gospel, the enemies of the light of God, the enemies that come from darkness, the enemies of righteousness. They have the power to rule. That's why in the book of Acts chapter 13, when a false prophet, a sorcerer, whose name was Bar Jesus, he was calling himself the son of Jesus, but his name was Elimas and he was a sorcerer, basically. He tried to contend against Paul preaching to the deputy. He tried to limit the gospel. He tried to basically create like a force field that will cause the deputy not to receive the gospel. And Paul rose up in judgment. Paul rose up in the rod of God's strength and he spoke and said, O full of all subtlety and mischief, thou enemy of righteousness, thou child of the devil, will you not cease to pervert the ways of God? And he said that the hand of the Lord is upon you and you will go about leaking and seeking whom to, to seek you, seeking whom to basically show you the way. You will go about with blindness. He told me you will be blind for a season. So he placed blindness upon somebody that was trying to limit the gospel because he had the power of God. He was dwelling in the reality of Zion. He was living in holiness basically he was living according to the ways of Zion which it speaks about you being surrounded by angels and you basically assembling yourself together with saint and living as a perfected version of yourself so that is basically the reality of Zion spoken about in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22 going down because that's what you need to live out for you to become the priest that can basically establish the ways of God and when you become a priest and when more people around you become priests then God will bring his judgment not only to your generation but also to the people that will come afterwards so that they can see the knowledge of God and they can choose to change because when the judgment of God comes it's not always always about people maybe praise um, people having situations of which they are in bad situations of um, maybe people perishing but sometimes God's judgment can just be somebody not receiving the blessing that they thought they were going to receive that can be a judgment something simple like that can be a judgment of god when that happens then the person realizes who god is sometimes god may use a situation even a car accident to cause somebody to realize that there's more things that are important than going out to make money or going out to a club to party to drink to get drunk going out to fornicate with people that you are basically not married to and stuff like that so that is what God may use sometimes. He may use a bad situation to show forth his judgment. It's not just about the end of days. It's not just about eschatology, but it's speaking about the judgment of God as a whole. It says in Psalm 110 verse 2, the Lord will send forth the rod of his strength out of Zion. Rule thou. That's the commission. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. And then it says what? The people will be willing in the days of thy power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. So it's saying a lot of things there. But it's saying that willingness is basically a prerequisite before you can establish power. That's why as a priest, you have to have the consistency mindset, the customary mindset. That's why it says in Luke chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. It says in Luke chapter 1 and chapter 2 that Zechariah the priest, he had a custom to go into the holy place to offer incense by the altar of incense. And when he did that, the people outside were praying. So it was his custom. It wasn't something that he wanted to do. But it was something that he programmed himself to want to do. Basically, he hearkened to the laws. He basically became somebody that was abiding by his quota, abiding by the consistency aspect of the gospel. There's a consistency aspect where the gospel will tell you, pray daily, pray without season, fast and do all of, the, all of these things so much and consistently. So that's basically the aspect of you being willing. When you are willing, then the power comes. When God can see that over time, whether it's a year, whether it's two years or three years, when God can see that you have been willing, he brings his power mightily over. Over every aspect of your life and then it says you have the dew of your youth so whenever god's power manifests it makes it seem like you are not really just a human being it makes it seem like you are somebody that doesn't go older or doesn't get older it makes you seem like you have the dew of your youth the dew of your youth is a blessing of your youth god can bless you with the things that the youths are supposed to be blessed with even in an old age if you are willing in the day of his power god can give you a blessing that people would think you don't deserve if you are willing in the days of his power so it goes on to say the lord has sworn and will not repent it's basically saying God will not change his mind that you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. It's talking to Jesus Christ. It's speaking about Jesus Christ. But the thing is that we are supposed to live like Christ. It basically says Christ in you, the hope of glory. And also says that basically we are called to be his image or to represent his image, to become like him, basically to be, to see him so much and to live in the truth of Christ so much that we become. We behold until we become changed into that image. That's what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. So basically... 
verse 16 going down to 18 tells you that you need to be changed because where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty so this scripture in psalm 110 is telling you that jesus christ is a high priest after the order of melchizedek right so this priesthood comes right before the rest of the chapter tells you about the judgment of the end of days because before before judgment can be established, priesthood has to be established as the standard. When you see the standard, when people can see the light of God and say, this is what God is, or this is basically who God is like, then at that point in time, judgment will come after that. When everybody in the world receives the knowledge of Christ, then the end of days will come. Then Maranatha will be established. That's why the commission of the believer is to go into the world and teach all nations and preach the gospel and that the knowledge of the word of God will spread unto the all nations. That's why it says that the end of days will not come until everybody in the whole world or rather every nation in the whole world will receive the knowledge of Christ. Some people may not receive Jesus Christ directly, but God will speak to them through their conscience. That's what it says in, in Romans chapter 2 verse 14. So basically, going back to Psalm 110, it goes on to tell you that the Lord at thy right hand will strike through kings in the day of his wrath. It's not speaking of judgment. The right hand represents the right hand of scepter, the right hand of the authority of a believer or the hand of authority. Whenever God stretches his right hand, he, he speaks of valiance. That's why in Exodus chapter 15, from verse 6 going down, Moses begins to sing the song to the Lord and basically saying, your right hand has become mighty and valiant. And then he says, who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorious and holiest, fearful in praises and doing wonders. So when he speaks of God's right hand, he's speaking of establishing power, establishing authority, establishing judgment. That's why it says the scepter of that kingdom is a right scepter. That's Psalm 45 verse 7. So basically, 45 or 6 sorry so basically it's speaking of the judgment of god because his right hand represents his strength so it goes on to say he will basically you will strike through the kings in the day of his right and then he will judge among the heathen and fill the places with the dead bodies and then he will rule among the nations and then he will drink of the brook of the way and then he will lift up the head the head represents christ christ will be exalted when the nations have been judged if the people choose not to change they will be judged and because of that, Christ will now drink of the brook of the way. So speaking of Jesus Christ coming down and basically overcoming the powers of darkness, and then he lifts up his head. So that is only going to happen after you become a priest. After the priesthood of Melchizedek, which is the priesthood of God, is established among the nations of the world. After people are becoming more priestly, after people start living more like Christ, when you see people living more and more like Christ, you need to know that the day of redemption is coming soon and you need to spread the news as far as you can east west north and south god bless you have a wonderful day